Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we are starting our AP Physics 2 journey involving pressure. And one of the main things with pressure that you have to understand is pressure is in relationship to liquids and gases. It cannot really relate to a solid as much because solids um, have a shape and a volume, but the volume and shape don't really change. The last time I uh, checked, um, I can't move and change the shape of a solid very readily unless it is a liquid. A liquid is different because a liquid can take the shape of a container. You can pour a glass of water into any container and it will conform to that. But the volume of that liquid does not readily change. The volume of water stays the same regardless of what you pour it into. The amount of water will remain the same. Liquids, most importantly, are incompressible. Because liquids are incompressible, they can flow under pressure. The last that we have is a gas. A gas has no fixed and or shape, just like a volume, but the difference between a gas and a liquid is a gas can expand and condense a little bit and it can fill in whatever container it is in versus a liquid, which will really only pour in and if it's a glass half full or glass half empty, that's all it would be able to do. Whereas a gas, if you sealed the, ga the, gla the gas in, a, li in a, like a cup, it would actually fill in that cup completely. All right. A fluid is a combination of both of these things. A fluid flows under pressure and it can include a liquid and a gas as well as plasma. So a fluid, because it can move, you can move liquids, you can move gases, and you can apparently move plasma. We're going to focus on liquids mostly. It would be considered different than a liquid. All right, so a fluid is something that can be moving fluidly. All right, that's why it's called that. Density is a big topic that we're going to have to talk about. Density is the ratio of an object's mass compared to its volume that it occupies, which is denoted by the, sig uh, the, blah, the symbol rho, this lowercase p, and density is relating the mass compared to its volume. Okay, so how big an object is, as far as its mass, divided by how much space it occupies. It has the, the units, kilograms per meters cubed, and pay attention to what you're dividing by it. It makes sense that the object is going to be more dense the heavier it weighs, the more kilograms an object is. The, obviously, it's gonna be more dense, but the volume plays a huge role in that. If you have, I don't know, uh, a thousand kilograms of an object, let's say it's a gas, and it occupies a space the size of a continent, it is going to be incredibly light and not very dense in terms of that nature. But if you took that same mass of a thousand kilograms and you compressed it into a tiny itty bitty box, that is going to be the heaviest box you've ever tried to lift. Okay? So the volume, because you're dividing by it, indicates that you are taking whatever mass is and you are taking the density and making it smaller because you're dividing by volume. All right. Specific gravity is the next term up here. If you've been reading specific gravity takes the density of any object and compares it to water. So you can find the specific gravity by taking rho, the density of your object and dividing by the density of water, which is 1000 kilograms per meters cubed. Okay. Volume is meters cubed and mass is kilograms, all right? So it would be very important for you to memorize the density of water. It's going to be used so often, you might as well memorize it. All right, pressure. Pressure is different. Pressure is relating to how much force an object is feeling divided by the area in which it is felt, okay? So because we're dividing by area, the smaller the area you have, the more pressure can be exerted, and the more pressure you have exerted, the more like power that little tiny bit of uh, space is feeling. Uh, you might have heard of pounds per square inch. Well, one atmospheric pressure is 1.013 times 10 to the fifth pascals. That is how much pressure per square inch you are feeling. Uh, it's pressure per square meter. You're feeling um, over the, your skin just by the weight of the atmosphere pushing down on you. All right, an example I have for you is this pen, this pen has a very tiny point. Well, it wouldn't take a lot of effort for me to take this pen and punch it through the paper. It's going through it with very little effort. 
Whereas if I were to take something that was bigger, an area that was bigger like this calculator, that would be a little hard, difficult to get to go through the paper because it's got a bigger area. And if you divide by a bigger number, that means that you are going to have a harder time getting it through and have less pressure, pressure because you're dividing by a bigger number. Anytime you divide by a bigger number, you end up getting a smaller number and therefore the pressure would be less. Okay? So, Pascal, principle. If the pressure is applied to a confined space, fluid, not space, then the pressure at all points in the fluid is greater than the hydrostatic pressure. The pressure throughout the fluid is increased everywhere, okay? So essentially, if you apply a pressure to a fluid, the pressure is increased through the fluid everywhere, which explains why when you apply a force down here, it applies a force over here as well. So that means that the pressure is increased everywhere. Well, here we have a small area, but the one force, that pressure of this, which is really high, is dispersed over here. And because it has a larger area, it might have a smaller force, but the pressure will be remaining the same. Pressure of one will be the same as pressure as two. And that means that the force of one divided by the area of one will have to equal the force of two divided by the area of two, okay? So, that's pressure in a nutshell. We're gonna do one example before we take a break for today, and that example is involving a hydraulic lift. So we got a car lift using pist pistons to raise a car. Compressed air exerts a uh, force on the piston with a radius of five centimeters, and the pressure on the piston is transmitted to a larger piston with a radius of 20 centimeters to lift a car that weighs 1,200 kilograms. So here's the diagram. I'm gonna try and cover up my answer. I'm just gonna show it. Um, we have this little force being pushed down on the fluid, and then that fluid is lifting a car, okay? So this distance is further indicating that we will have more time to push down this little tiny bit but that pressure is gonna be pretty high because it's a confined area, and therefore we can actually do a lot of work on the other end, which is lifting a car over a very short distance. It's not gonna go very high into the air. So, part one, what force does the compressed air exert? All right, so I filled in the formula. I'm just gonna maybe redo it over here. We got, according to Pascal's triangle, not Pascal's triangle, Pascal's principle, he also invented the triangle. Force one divided by area one will equal force two divided by area two. Well, force one is area of one. Well, that would be pi times five squared. And force two is uh, right here, and that would equal the area of two. That would be pi times 20 squared, and it's pi r squared because we do have a piston, and a piston, ladies and gentlemen, is a circle case you didn't know. Now, if you cross multiply that, you will end up with force one, uh, actually, let's just multiply by the pi um, five squared because we're looking for force one. Force one would equal force two times pi times five squared divided by pi times 20 squared. The pi's would cancel, whoosh, goodbye. And you may also be asking yourself, wait a minute, Mr. Sohn, how come you didn't turn your centimeters into meters? And that's because right here, um, the centimeters, technically they're squared, they're gonna cancel out as well. It's a ratio problem, therefore it, it kinda just doesn't matter as much. Force one will equal force two times this stuff then. So that means force one will equal force two. Well, what's the force of two? Well, force is equal to mass times acceleration and the mass of this force two is the car. So let's fill that in, 1,200 kilograms. Um, times the acceleration, well, the acceleration is um, gravity. It's having to for fight gravity, and for simplification, we're not gonna use 9.8, we're gonna call it 10 meters per second squared. And then that would be ending up multiplying by 25 times 400 for the five squared over 20 squared. And if we do all of this, 
we end up with a force of 750 newton. 750 newtons for force one. So that's part A. What work is being done by the pistons? Well, the work of anything is equal to force times displacement, which in this case is delta x. So what work is being done by the pistons here and how do they compare? Well, there's a few things that you can do with this. We um, don't know the delta x and that's a problem. Uh, we, we do not know delta x. We need to figure out how can we relate all the things that we have to delta x. Well, delta x is involving length and like uh, where this fluid used to be, used to be kind of like volume, right? We have, let's turn the paper here. Um, we have essentially this vertical height times the area equals volume. And over here we have this shorter vertical height times the area would also equal volume. And we know the volumes have to be the same, so we should probably relate something involving this to volume. So the volume of both of these is going to be the same. Volume one will have to equal volume two. And if volume one is having to equal volume two, let's figure out the volume of each. We know volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times height. Well, pi and r are provided squared times the height, we're gonna call that delta x one. We don't know that. And we know that the volume of the other one will equal pi times the radius of that is 20 squared times delta x two. So we can solve for delta x one and delta x two by using um, just some dividing techniques. We can divide by, um, let's divide by well, which one do I wanna have on top? I'm gonna to have the x1 on top. So I'm gonna divide by delta x2, and that would cancel. And I'm gonna divide by pi times five squared, and that would cancel. So now we have a relationship between the change in height, which is the displacement, which we need for work, because again, work is equal to force times displacement, which is delta x. So we now have a, an increment of how we can figure out the delta x's at least. So the pi's are gonna cancel. And if we do 20 squared divided by five squared, you get a number. Let's see if it actually works out. 20 squared, it does, I think. 400 divided by 25 is 16. So that means the delta x one divided by delta x two, the change in displacements will equal 16 over one, okay? And if 16 over one is equal to that, we also have to figure out um, the forces of each. Well, what's the force of delta x1? Well, delta x1, we had 750. And if we plug that in for 750, and we plug in the 1200, let's see what that equals. We get 16 times 750 divided by 1200. 1200 or 12,000? Oh, oh, it's not 1,200. Why is it not 1,200? It's 1,200 times 10, because it's 1,200 kilograms times 10 for gravity. We had the, the, uh, the, the acceleration part. We got, we got our delta x, we need the force. Well, 750 times 16 gives us 12,000 and so on and so forth, 12,000 times, 1,200 times 10 is also 12,000. So that means that we have the work is one over one. Well, if the work is one over one, that means that the work done has to remain the same. And the answer to that should have been obvious from the get-go. The amount of work we do over here, how hard we're pushing down over here is kind of like kinetic energy and the kinetic energy must be preserved. So the kinetic energy over here has to fight the kinetic energy, has to fight the gravity over here, and they will remain the same. Work and uh, energy can uh, be created nor destroyed, therefore the work must be the same. All right, and we just proved it. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. We got some more examples on the next one. Until then, stay positive, my friends. Bye.